Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome to another World of Tanks video. This time we're taking a look at some French light tanks. Of course the light tanks were rejigged a few patches ago and that included the French ones. And we got tanks changing tiers, changing matchmaker, getting buffed, getting nerfed, new ones added and so on and so forth. Going to be two replays for you in this video. We're kicking off with Gregory's Fish in his batch at 12T. This is now the tier 8 French light tank. Um, I've recently been playing the odd game here or two in this thing. Need to do some grinding in it to unlock. I can't even remember what it is. Batch at 25 TAP or something? Can't quite remember. But either way, I need to do some more games in it. Um, so this is on Muravanka, which is not a completely terrible map for a light tank. Um, we've got a reasonable number of tanks going into the forest on the friendly team. It's a tier 10 match, by the way. So Gregory here is bottom tier. Not packing any APCR ammunition either, just using the armor piercing with 170 average damage and 170 pen. So trying to get those flanks on people. Hello, Mr. Object 907. Ah, oh, second shot bounce. And can we make it for... Oh, be careful there. Sometimes very difficult shooting into those melees, into those brawls, but to give credit where credit is due. Gregory does apologise for that shot into the T-34, and it's not as if that shot made the difference between the die guy. The die guying or not? The guy dying or not? Words, my old nemesis. So, yeah, there we go. Scoreline is 1-3 now. Friendly team hasn't got off to a particularly good start. Um, having lost three tanks, although they're all bottom tier. And now Gregory's engaging this M41 Black Dog. Trying to deny the guy shots on him, although that last bit, I will be honest, was a poor trade. Gregory only had one shot left in the magazine, and whilst the Black Dog did die, he traded one shot from his 75mm gun for one shot from the um, Bulldog's 90mm gun, alpha damage wise. As I said, not a good trade at all. But Gregory is being fairly aggressive with this, moving up towards the last known location of that Scorpion G. See if he can spot the fellow out. He's over, got over 1,100 assistance damage now, by the way. T57 heavy, one. Change to the Scorpion, one in there. Kill him and just keep going. Reload your magazine. Don't push your luck. Over 2,000 assistance damage now, and over 1,200 damage of his own. Coming around, takes a hit from the Stritzvang, which is a bit unfortunate. IS-3 over there. Manages to get out of the way of him. Actually bounces a shot in the uh, off his rear from an Udez, which is very lucky because that thing, um, at average damage, would be enough to finish Gregory off at this point. But he's already had a good game, 1,255 damage, 3,373 assistance damage, and six tanks are dead on both teams, make that seven on the friendly team. So Gregory is just trying to spot some peeps out, <laughs> and you can see in chat Gregory's just noticed that he got 3k assistance. Yep, that's a thing that happened as he was driving around like a maniac, desperately trying to not get shot, essentially. So, just seeing if he can spot any more peeps, get any view range. He's using binos here. Whoa, T57 heavy, no thank you very much. <coughs> Gregory's using binos here. Um, I use optics on mine. The thing with using optics is without an incredibly skilled crew, you don't hit view range cap with this tank, which is a little bit of a shame. Gregory seems to have his setup more as a dedicated uh, scout than I do. So he's got binos, camo net, and don't know what the third equipment choice is. Um, wouldn't be surprised if it was a vertical stabiliser, that is what I would pick as a priority. One, two, oh, one more shot into the Pershing should finish him off. And there we go, kill number two for Gregory there, and he reloads his magazine once again. The gun on this tank actually feels fairly comfortable. Don't know why he's apologising to the Conway, I mean he did what he could. Um, the gun feels relatively comfortable, four shells in the magazine means the, um, the the clip damage of what 600 plus 680 is okay it's not not as impressive as some other autoloaders in the game even at tier 8 of course 
but it's not bad and the reload for the magazine is also not completely terrible. And bearing in mind this thing gets the same matchmaker that the old AMX 1375 used to get. I wouldn't sit there facing off against the Ag Tiger, Greg. Um, oh, hello, Mr. Fire. Uh, and the old um, 1375 used to get, goodbye, Mr. IS3, used to get 140-something penetration. Um, got a larger magazine, but the penetration was worse. Overall, though, I think the gun is definitely an upgrade over the 1375's old gun. So, over 4,000 assistance damage now, and over 2,400 regular damage. Um, but the scores are still very even. Uh, we have got the Tiger and Anudes, who were last spotted over at the back there. M4043 artillery piece, last spotted over at the back. And a T10 and an Object 907, who were last spotted over in the woods. Do need to be careful here. So, Gregory goes into a bush, gets spotted out, uh, do not want that, do not want to end up dead. Um, and this team actually seems pretty pleasant, he's getting people say, oh, you're doing a good job and things like that, which is always nice. <coughs> so, see what Gregory can actually do with this situation. Um, there is one artillery left on the friendly team, if Gregory is able to spot out either of those tank destroyers without getting nuked then um, the RT, with any luck, should be able to land a big fat shell onto one of their faces. Object 907 being spotted out. Oh, this is, yeah, let's not do that engagement. Gregory doesn't have the clip damage to one shot, uh, to clip this guy, and before that 268 got killed, with the 268 he would have had enough damage to kill the guy, as it is, Someone else puts a shot into the 907. So despite the fact that the object 268 actually dies, Gregory is able to pick up the kill on that object. Not really sure why the object didn't just turn around, where his frontal armour would probably have been enough to see off this gun, and just shoot Gregory in the face. Instead, he decided to run away for some reason, and thus expose his fat, juicy ass to Gregory's bat chat here. But, eh, go figure. Almost up to 3k damage now, by the way. Scoreline is 11-10. Jagdtiger over yonder. If Gregory's able to put some flanking shots into him, that'd be great. Someone else is already working this guy over. Looks like artillery. As the Jagdtiger has been stunned. Can Gregory pick up the kill? Not the best aim shot in the world. But he is able to pick up the kill with the second shot. Reloads the magazine. Backs off and the team loses their score. PNG. 12-11. Um, and I've only played a few tanks, a few tanks, a few games myself in the Batch Out 12T, but I have actually been having some fun in it. Um, it does seem to be a pretty competent Tier 8 light tank, as far as I can make out. The view range is a little disappointing, but that seems to carry over onto the AMX 1390 at Tier 9 as well, which I've played far too much of. Um, and actually. I know I did a review of it and I said I was selling it, but I might rebuy the 1390 at some point. I kind of burned myself out on the tank, but it's a decent tank. Um, anyway, Gregory's just coming over to some bushes, see if he can spot out that T10. There's also artillery, of course, and that Udez. We don't know exactly where he is. By nose were up, no one was spotted. <coughs> so Gregory is going to relocate. Now this is one of those situations well, you look at it and you think Gregory might be able to go for the artillery here, which would be nice. But that Udez, well, we know where he was last spotted, but he's not. He's likely not there anymore, otherwise the T-34 would probably have found him one way or another. So the Udez could well have retreated to a more defensible location. And it might end up that going for that artillery piece actually got Gregory killed. Anyway, as it is... The Udez actually repositioned to right over the other side of the map. And unfortunately, Gregory gets caught out by the guy anyway, which is decidedly unfortunate. There are five minutes left on this match. So, three plays three at the end. A heavy, a TD, and an RT on each team. So the Stilitzwang apparently wasn't able to hit the Udez from where he was, and that was just unfortunate. So maybe Gregory 
would actually have been able to go and take out the artillery as it turns out. I wasn't expecting the Udez to have relocated all the way around there. Bit of a shame. But there we go. I am going to speed this along a little bit because otherwise this is potentially going to be quite sluggish. We've got a T10 who hasn't been spotted for ages. We've got an Udez who is very sneaky and very um, difficult to spot. And we've got an artillery piece who is probably not going to get spotted in a hurry. So it does mean that, oh dear, it does mean that this is potentially going to be quite a campy game. T-34 takes a little bit of stunning from the enemy artillery. Friendly artillery stuns the Udez. Yeah. EPKIA, just going to speed this along a little bit. T-10 has been spotted over to the left-hand side. Thankfully, he doesn't have much health left. But that T-34 really doesn't want to rush an Udez. The Udez has a reasonable chunk of health left himself and has quite a lot of DPM going for him. Unfortunately, T-34 takes an artillery hit again. So, driver back in the T-34. Let's just speed this along a little bit once more. T-10... Puts a shot into the T-34, and the T-10 dies. <clears throat> and so we have a GW Tiger, and a T-34, and an S-1, versus an Udez, and an M-40, M-43, who just slapped the T-34 again. Three plays, two, but less than three minutes on this match. Let's just see what we can do here. So, less than two minutes left on the match now. And, oh, Udez. Well, the T-34 manages to land a hit on the Udez, but then gets artillery. That's been the bane of the T-34's existence for the last few minutes. Friendly artillery lands a shot near him, but isn't actually able to kill him. Stritzvang versus Udez. My money is actually on the S1. They're both one-shots. Whereas the Stritzvang has a good chance of actually bouncing the Udez, the same is not really true in reverse. Like that. Just leaves the artillery left on the enemy team. But, well, the S1's going to have to motor it over to the other side of the map in order to take out the enemy artillery. 40 seconds left on the match. 20... 10. Yeah, I think we can see the way this one's going to go. And, unfortunately, as it was, that was actually a draw there for Gregory in his batch at 12T. So let's go and check out exactly how well he did. There we go then, that was enough for Ace Tanker, Bruiser, Fighter, Fire for Effect and an Orlix medal in Gregory's bat chat 12T there. 2,908 damage done, 5 kills, 1,027 base experience. That's before you include the heroic resistance for that Orlix medal. Um, Stritzvang S1 did 3,500 damage, well done to him. Conway 2.5, 2k from the T34, so none too shabby. Object 907, 1,800 damage in a tier 10, he didn't have a particularly good game. Shoutouts to the enemy T10 and Object 907s, both of whom racked up um, around, well, over 4,000 damage. So well done to each of them. 24 shots fired, 23 hits, 18 penetrations for 2,908 damage. 4 hits received, 1 didn't penetrate, which was lucky in and of itself. 2 enemy vehicles spotted, 7 damaged, 5 destroyed, 4,410 assistance damage uh, which makes that a com uh, combined over 7,000 uh, damage done and assisted over seven kilometers traveled as well and a profit there of basically 39,000 credits so a very nice result there for Gregory in his Bachatillion 12T let's go and have a look at another replay Second replay for this video then, and it's me driving, and we've jumped up a tier from the Batchat 12T to the AMX 1390. So this thing is the tier 9 French 
light tank. I have shown a couple of videos including or showing this video, this video with this tank before and I've also got a review of this on my channel. Feel free to go and take a butchers if you're interested in it. So this thing used to be tier 8 then got bumped up to tier 9 which is why I have played this thing a lot but I haven't really played the batch at 12T yet. Anyway, we are here on Sand River. It's an assault game on the defending team, and it's a tier 10 match. Yeah, tier 10 matches, I mean, you're in a tier 9 tank, that's fine. That's fine. That's what you should expect uh, a lot of the time, to be honest. So, Rheinmetall, Panzerkampfwagen, T49, and myself, so that's three light tanks, all immediately go up to this position to try and do some spotting. Hurrah! Um, if you actually look at the matchmaking, there's one artillery on each team and a couple of heavy tanks, a few mediums, but most of the team is made up of light tanks and tank destroyers. So this is going to be interesting. By the way, if you are using this position on Sand River, if you go into the region where I am currently sat, on this side of this little hill, you tend to find artillery has a harder time hitting you than if you're over where, say, the Rheinmetall is or even the STA-2. So I would always recommend getting down into this side of the incline. Now so far we haven't really managed to achieve anything which is a little bit of a shame. Um, but we're going to try and see if we can, I thought for a moment we're going to try and see if we can get some shots on that T44-100 but apparently not. Seeing what we might be able to do, WZ put one into his bum but we're not going to push our luck by staying up there to use our autoloader because we're probably going to get ourselves shot in the face and that is not going to be particularly beneficial. So, there we go. Rheinmetall is getting absolutely wrecked. He's now on 290 health. That looked like a couple of shots from regular tanks, probably TDs, and an artillery round there as well. He is not having a good day. We've got three rounds left in our autoloader. Six degrees of gun depression is enough to put one into that AMX 1390. And back off. Two rounds left in the autoloader. We're nearly, really not using the magazine particularly effectively here, but we can't really expose ourselves for long enough in order to use that. We've lost our WZ-132A. There goes our other light tank, which is a little bit of a shame, but c'est la vie. And there are quite a few of us over at this location. It is a little bit crowded, but never mind. AMX 1390, I didn't really want to push that. It would have been nice to pick up the kill on him, but really didn't want to push my luck there. So, just seeing, is there anyone else we can do anything to? T44-100 and T25 Pilot um, were last spotted over at sort of the E1 region. And what can we do? I've gone for a reload on the magazine, by the way, because it wasn't really doing anything anyway, and I might as well go into an engagement with all four shells just to try and maximise the amount of damage that I do. Now we are defending on this map, so to a certain extent we don't mind just boring this out. Because um, in that case, you know, it should play into our favour anyway. APCR rounds there, as you fire a standard with this tank, help us with that shell velocity to pick up the kill on the enemy 1390, which is nice. And that gives us a kill on the board. Thank you, Mr. Rheinmetall. Um just trying to get some more spots on people and just to see what's going on no such joy if we go up here we might be able to spot something oh we spot out a lurver who gets shot and that's some assistance damage for us one shell into him second one bounces and we're not going to hang around to wait to try and pick up the kill because that's just going to get a shot um, we managed to take out the guy's tracks and he dies, so we pick up a little bit of assistance damage into the bargain there as well. Our Ryan Metal Pads Kampfwagen finally succumbs to the inevitable and explodes, and the scoreline is 4 4, but we're approaching 5 minutes 30 left on the clock, so so far, fine. We seem to be doing alright. Slightly disturbing that we've lost a top tier tank and the enemy team as of yet has not, but, you know, not the end of the world. Coming around to see if I can spot anyone or if anyone's going to be spotted and I can shoot them. And just as I pull back, there's the T44-100. So, magazine is loaded. Let's see what we can do. First shot misses. Let's 
gun can be a little bit derpy. Second shot hits. Third one hits. And fourth one goes in. If that last, if that first shot had also connected, we probably still wouldn't have killed him. He's got 265 health left, which is more than the 240 average damage done by one of these 90mm shells. Nonetheless, we did manage to put some hurt down on that T44-100. The scoreline is, however, now 4-5. Can we do something about this T44 then? Shot in and kill. Fantastic. Reload the magazine again. So that levels the scoreline once more at five kills apiece. We've got two of them, and we're up to 1,750 damage so far as well. Nothing too spectacular, just trying to be opportunistic and not push our luck too much, because ultimately we are defending on this map, and to a certain extent time should be on our side. WZ1321, very conscious that I don't want to spot him, get spotted, and then just get deleted from existence by that Jagdpanzer E100. Okay, maybe he wouldn't completely delete me. He might just leave me on bugger all health, but he has moved. Ho hum. He's also now getting shot up, which is nice. So there's some uh, tasty, tasty assistance damage for yours truly. Um, Stritzvang 103B, it would be really nice to be able to take out that tier 10 Swedish TD. One shot in, second fails to penetrate, and I am not facing that thing frontally. He will bounce my shots, I won't bounce his, I'll come off the worse for wear. We don't really want that. So, he is moving his tank, the STA-2 is taking advantage of that to put shots into his flank while I reload my magazine. And we might be able to put some more damage downrange once our magazine is loaded with any luck. There we go. There we go. One into the front. And he turns his tank. There's a second. Third one flubs. And he gets taken out by the T-30. Scoreline is 7-8. And we're reloading the magazine again. So we're up to roughly two and a half thousand damage done, plus sixteen hundred assistance. So that's that's not too shabby now. We've had a reasonable um, impact on this game, but the scoreline is seven nine, two and a half minutes left. I'm still feeling relatively confident that we should be able to win this game because the enemy team, well, they have two and a half minutes to do something spectacular, and then suddenly, surprise, E seventy five. And one more shot to kill this guy. There we go. Um, we managed to execute the E75 without taking any damage in return. And we reload our magazine as well. And these guys, we're kind of getting in each other's way here. And holy mother of God, that's a Jagdpanzer E100. Who deletes our... Whoa, he deleted our T30. He then rammed the STA2. And I really want to get around the flanks of this guy now to actually do him some damage. Our friendly artillery hits him. He unfortunately splashes me a little bit and stuns me, but he killed the Jagdpanzer. I am not going to complain. WZ-132 comes through now. I might take one hit from this guy. Yep. Um, but managed to kill him in the process and puts us on four kills. But there's only two of us left now, me and the artillery. How quickly things can change. Now, the guy is saying, in chat, people are saying, run, hide, run away. It makes perfect sense. I'm going to go and do it. I am choosing to go in this direction, and my logic is that the T-28 prototype and the T-69 were last spotted over on the other flank. T-25 pilot was over here, and so my logic is, if I go after the T-25 pilot, I could probably kill the pilot, and I don't have a friggin med pack at this point, kill the pilot and that should leave me relatively safe. As it is, I take an artillery round and I'm not quite able to clip the pilot here and this is bad and I'm in a bad situation so I'm just trying to get into a region where I'm not going to continually get shot by the bad guys. Need to reload my magazine in the process and I just need to get away from this pilot. I'm trying to dodge as best I can. Get tracked, repair the track, get around the corner, execute the pilot. And there's a T-69. Oh dear, that's not good. Flub that shot, and unfortunately I die to the T-28 prototype. C'est V, unfortunately, that is the match. So I tried running, but it's one of those you try running and suddenly all the bad guys turn up at once. 
Never mind. Let's go and have a look at the post-battle stats once more in this video. So that was actually enough for an ace tanker, fighter, duelist, fire for effect, bruiser, and a tank sniper award of all things. Was not expecting that. 4,249 damage done, 5 kills, 846 base experience. That's before you include the heroic resistance. Shout out should go to the AMX 30, you managed over 3,000 damage. Artillery also had a good game, T30 also did well, but things like our WZ132A basically did nothing, our Grilla 15 did nothing, our FV215B did nothing. That's two tier 10s and a tier 9 who essentially achieved nothing in that match. When you've got things like that, it can be quite difficult to pull a win out of the bag. 28 shots fired, 24 hits, 21 pens for that damage count. Most of which was, well, about 2,000 was from uh, more than 300 metres. The rest from closer range. 5 hits received, 4 penned, 1 didn't and 1 splash. 1 enemy vehicle damaged, uh, sorry, 1 enemy vehicle spotted, 7 damaged, 5 destroyed, 1,818 assistance damage, 3.5 kilometres travelled. With a premium account, we actually made a 40,000 credit profit despite the defeat. And we had um, personal reserves running at the time, so even though it was a loss, we still made about 4,000 experience, which is none too shabby. So there we go, that was a pair of uh, replays for you in French light tanks. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, by all means, feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel. And as ever, I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.